The dark side of the Force is a pathway to many abilities some consider to be unnatural. Boom. Okay, welcome people. This is the first, maybe, I don't know, I'm depending on the order these go out, I don't know. <laughs> but this is the first installment of our dark side reviews. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> you do know you're going to have to find that, that sound now. <laughs> It's, uh, yeah, yeah, I'll find it. If worse comes to where, I'll just download it from a clip or something. Yeah, that works as well. There's ways around this, but either way, the Emperor will be making an appearance during this program. Either at the beginning or the end, I don't know, depending on where he shows up. No. 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 You are the guy! He might randomly show up in the middle. <laughs> I might randomly put clips of the Emperor going, ah! <laughs> all throughout. <laughs> Just scattered all throughout the audio. Oh, dear Lord. Oh, my goodness. Well, no, th this is one we watched today. This was the dark side of the ring, focusing on the Road Warriors. Mm. Slash Legion of Doom. Yes. Depending on how far back in history you want to go. See the old pal, we got the tornado warrior. We got the ultimate warrior. The power warrior. Yeah. Which we'll, we'll touch on him later. Mm. So no, there, there was a lot of things in this program I didn't know. This was a very interesting watch. Yes. Indeedy. Because this went all throughout most of their career. Yeah. You didn't get a lot of the latest stuff. I find they didn't cover LOD 2000 with Sonny. Yeah, no. No, they didn't touch on that, although they did uh, touch a bit on... Uh, well, I suppose they were still sort of LOD 2000 then when uh, when you had the introduction of Droz. Mm. Yeah, they sort of showered over the Sonny stuff, so sort of take it out of what you will. <laughs> <laughs> Probably for the best. So, and for uh, anyone that... Doesn't know. There was a familiar voice narrating the whole of season two of Dark Side of the Ring. Yeah. One Chris Irvine. Oh, okay. We're breaking the full horse. Okay. Le Champion. <laughs> Y2J, baby. Come on. So, yeah. Um, I don't know if we're going to be touching season one too much, but we're definitely going to be delving in quite a bit into season two. Yeah. So there's quite a few hot topics in there. Obviously, the notable big episodes are uh, Chris Benoit, well, the Bum Benoit family, murder, homicide, however you want to class it. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Hopefully it's not going to be too painful, but you got a Martha discussing Owen Hart. Oh, that's going to be a tough watch. Mm. And uh, one that I watched uh, the other day, but you haven't got round to it quite yet. No. Uh, Jimmy Snooker and his uh, murder or not murder of his girlfriend in the 80s. I will pick up these along the way. Yeah. So, well, what surprised you about this episode? Well, um, what things did you pick up on that you maybe you didn't know before? I mean, for me, obviously, you sort of got the rough idea of like the the wrestling culture, shall we say, in like the eighties and early nineties, that. But well, I went when they touched on their stuff in New Japan when they were in New Japan. That sort of quite shocked me because like animal always come across as like the more reserved one out of the two and mm. hawk just wanted to have a good time and it was when they were sort of discussing there about like like hawk was like near enough like hanging out with the japanese mafia <laughs> and that and doing all sorts of weird and wonderful things so yeah sort of I don't know, because obviously, you know, growing up, LOD, Road Warriors, however you remember them as, they, they were a big part, huge part of tag team wrestling. And yeah. sort of like, you know, to find out, like, you know, one of them was just sort of like just big party animal and just sort of did whatever the hell he liked to an extent for 
a large portion of his career. Yeah, I mean, it was nice hearing from his family, hearing like how you know how energetic he was he was a kid and he just like never stopped. And yeah. he was always getting in trouble, always getting in fights. <laughs> yeah. This is Hawk we're talking about, no, not animal. Yeah. I mean Hawk was the more tragic of the two. Yes. That's that's who you're talking about with all the drinking and whatnot. Mm. And god damn it, Paul Ellering, why do you never age? It's it's crazy. Yeah, it is quite crazy. <laughs> it is quite crazy with that, isn't it? I mean, I didn't know the stuff about SummerSlam that he was actually intoxicated when he came out for that match. Yeah. And they made him drive that motorcycle down to the ring. Yeah, and then obviously Animal discussed how he was like really hesitant to do the Doomsday device. And he was mm. just like, he's not getting up there. So they had to come up with a different finish for the match. Yeah, basically. I mean, we actually even saw the finish and it was just Tim power slamming the guy. Yeah. Animal, not yeah. Hawk. No. Because, <laughs> you know, I'm never going to be able to watch that match the same way again now because I'm going to watch it knowing that Hawk is drunk the whole time. Yeah. Yeah, and obviously they likely touched on some of the LOD 2000 stuff and then... You have the bloody awful storyline where um, Hawk fought Droz. Oh, God. And and they and Vince basically wanted to do the whole hey, let's let's bring his drinking problem into the into the television program now and he, he can pretend to be drunk and all of this and it yeah, and obviously I think quite a few people deep down were sort of like do you really <laughs> want to go there? That's not a good idea. <laughs> no. I What's mean, this? Vince bringing up someone's alcohol problems into a storyline? <coughs> Jeff Hardy. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Whammy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, champ. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, that storyline without him having him climbing the Titatron drunk and... Yeah, and then you had him like being pushed off at the top of the side yeah. and by Draws. Draws. Draws, I mean, oh god. When when he came up on the screen and you see what he's like now. Yeah. That was that's a whole other story in itself. Yeah, yeah, that was hard to take him, but then obviously you touched on like, you know, as bad as it is now, it was worse back in the day. I mean he, he I think you said he could like barely speak mm. when it when it first happened. That so for like, I suppose in some ways for him to like get his speech back, that's quite remarkable mm. in its own in its own way. And that well, he got paralyzed. Man. It's, yeah. When D'Lo dropped him with that power bomb, he pretty much mm. paralyzed him. Yeah. And that's why even looking at him in that wheelchair now is just it's a sad sight when you see what he was like. Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, give him his dues, he's quite a jacked dude in that. I mean, hell, I even forgot that he was a member of the Legion of Doom. I forgot that they had brought him in. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, that was, uh, that was after Sonny made a departure. Oh, which one? <laughs> <laughs> the, the latter. <laughs> but no, but to be perfectly honest, I'm quite happy they didn't touch on, like, the... Was it LOD 2006 with yes. Animal and Hyde and Reich? <sighs> Obviously, they did touch on the on the New Japan stuff when Animal and Hawk had their sort of lovers' tiff breakup and that. And well, yeah, I mean, I didn't know that either. I mean, at the time, we would have had no access to J Japanese wrestling. No, not really. So watching him come out with some other guy wearing the Legion of Doom pads, yeah. and they were like green, I think they were. And Hawk yeah. Bomb was red, and this other guy had green pads. Yeah, and no, I think, did he have, like, black and green face paint yeah. as well? Yeah. I was like, I didn't know that either. It's, no. It's crazy that he went and did that while mm. Animal was still wrestling by himself. Yeah, and I think Paul Ellering was still in the picture a little bit, like, over the States side of things and that. So, yeah, sort of. Bit of a betrayal there. And they didn't touch on the WCW run either. Because there was a time mm. in the 90s where they went to WCW briefly. That's right. I'm not sure if they were involved with the NWO or anything, but um, I definitely remember them being there. Yeah. 
Were they briefly there in the early 90s as well, I think? Or I think so. Was that mainly the Georgia Championship Wrestling? Probably was, yeah. yeah. It was before they became WCW. Yeah, right. But no, I mean, that was... Yeah, it was uh, nice as well. So, like, see how they met one another as well. And I think it was at middle school, they said. Yeah. Like, they, like, met and that. And then it was all, like... Just before they got into wrestling, like Hawk was like a bouncer and he sort of got animal into it. <laughs> yeah, I love that story where like they were throwing guys out of the bar and one landed by Ole Anderson. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because obviously they said at the time, was it Animal, I think, Ole was interested in? Mm. Yeah, because like, he had never done wrestling before and mm. you know, they made him go to the wrestling school and he went, yeah, mm. yeah, that's... Something something they never considered before. Mm. <laughs> but then they didn't know how to wrestle. They were throwing real punches and like breaking people's noses and one. <laughs> uh, oh, I gotta say, my favorite one when they were telling that story of how Vince was taking everyone's finisher. <laughs> <laughs> Vince took the doomsday to Yeah, I think, I think they say they were in like. I think it was sort of like, like a strip club yeah, or like a hooters or something. <laughs> Vince, he and there was actually like some mocked up clip of some guy dressed as Vince taking mm. the clip, taking the doomsday device in the back. <laughs> and you can imagine him doing it as well. <laughs> ah! <laughs> there goes Vinny. I mean, why would you take everyone's finish? I just. <laughs> Was a privy, he can hang with the guys. Because I mean, that that finisher hurt people. Yeah, yeah. That was not that was not a uh, pretty finisher. If you weren't trained to take that finisher, you were getting hurt. Yeah, because generally most people did a flip in midair. Mm. It was the odd person that would like just fall backwards. Yeah. But no, and then um, as well, obviously touched on. Um, Hawks passing and that, and uh, oh. obviously, I don't know exactly when these recordings would have happened, uh, but you would have presumed like in the last five years or so. Mm. It's impressive to see that like Paul Ellering can like still remember like his eulogy from Hawks' funeral, yeah. like, word for word, and that. I mean, I suppose in some ways, you know, it's not exactly something you're gonna forget. You know, burying one of your one of your friends and that, but still. Oh man, that that bit was just tough to watch. Yeah, because you could see Ellering like breaking down when he was reciting that. Yeah, you could tell it was still a still a bit raw, even even to this day. Because if you think, I mean, you discussed it earlier when, like, you said that oh, that why does this keep happening when they're clean? And and he was clean at that point. I mean, you had the clips yeah. of him with his wife. Yeah. Got himself sorted, and I think was he was he doing something in Japan or? Oh no no no! They they done like some stuff in Australia. And yeah, that, that was it. And no, and wanted to check him out of the hotel and mm. take him home. Yeah, because he said like he didn't want to die in this country. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I suppose trying to look from the positives, like you know, he did that wish for his friend. He got the chance to do that at least. I mean, it's good that he was clean before the end. Mm. But like you touched on, you know, the years of abuse and everything, you know, damage has already already been done, you know. Yeah, it was Re- crazy. Yeah. Unfortunately, he sort of brings up a reminiscence of Eddie. You yeah. Know? He had his substance abuse issues and whatnot, and I think what he... He was like on the verge of sort of like celebrating like four or five years yeah. clean when when he passed. He was so. off it. it was, I'm trying to think, yeah, when he came back in two thousand two, and he had been to rehab, he had done it. He was clean from that point on. Yeah. Yeah. But I say it was too late because yeah. once that damage is there, his well, it was his heart, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah same with same with Hawk. Yeah, his heart gave out. I mean, take anymore. Just hearing that story of how they found him and like animal wasn't even there. Yeah, weren't it? 
him and his wife had been moving house or whatever, and like he like moved like the last heavy thing in, and it was like, oh, I'm I'm feeling a little bit rough. I'm gonna go lie down for a minute. It's like just hearing of that phone call where it was like, oh, have you spoken to him today? Yeah. And he went, oh no, so he passed away like last night. And it was like, God damn it, you <laughs> having to get that phone call? Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, absolutely crazy. And they didn't touch on any of the the stuff after that. We didn't get LOD 2006 with Heidenreich. Yeah. Which is for the best. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Because plus, obviously, we remembered a very awfully tasted storyline involving LOD 2006 and M&M. Yeah, I think even Hawk was brought up in that promo. Yes, yes, he was, yeah, and uh, so I don't want to go too much into it because it was it was just unneeded and it it was just tasteless, well, and, and, and unclassy. And that's I guarantee that was a Vince, more than likely. And I'm happy that they didn't touch on Animal's solo career after that either, when he went heel and just became yeah. the Road Warrior. Mm, yeah, yeah, that was. And it was like, really? You're like 40-something. Do, do you have to be doing this? Mm. I'm disappointed in one thing, though. Yeah? We didn't see any of Johnny Ace. <laughs> Johnny Ace should have been on there. <laughs> he was just there on his scooter in like a family portrait. But what would he have said? He would have just told, I love my brother, you know. <laughs> <laughs> He's a good brother. <laughs> People <laughs> bounce. <laughs> oh yeah, because he'd throw that one in there. Absolutely. <laughs> oh. But no, no. Overall, you know, despite the hike and tragedies at the end, I, I thought it was a really, really good episode. Yeah, really, really insightful. I mean, yeah, I found out a lot of things there I didn't know. So this is definitely one on you should watch, everyone. Yes. I mean, hopefully we're going to be doing a lot more of these. Yeah, I've uh, I've got a plan to try and watch a few in the near in the near future. Yeah, I'll, I'll be picking them up as well at some point because <laughs> you know I'm, I'm getting close to Metal Gear Solid Five, so I've got to oh I've got to nearly knock that one out. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's going to do it for this review. If you have any comments about this show, if you've seen it, maybe you've watched it, then feel free to put some stuff in the comments below. Yep. What did you guys get from it? Because, I mean, I, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. So, that's going to do it for this edition of the Dark Side Review. <laughs> As always, from your hosts, the master of the brain damage, Martin, and the one and only Sam H., We'll see you again for the next one. It's only one way I can end this. Uh, what a rush. <laughs> <laughs>